that was my love hand. God confused you now. Truth and love, truth and love. The world is divided into two groups of people. Some of us, the truth, doctrine, uh, keeping the commandments and being faithful, that's kind of where our heart is. That's where like, no, no, we really have to get back to that. That's what the church needs. And some of us are more, oh no, it's like people need to know they're loved. People need to encounter the love of God. It's all about the love. Both sides can kind of get a bit, uh, can get a bit heated, right? And what I would propose is that we need both. There's a, there's a great saying by St. Jerome that I can't remember, but one of our friars did an adjusted form, and that one I do remember. Now I just have to remember it. Love without truth lies. Truth without love kills. Let's say that again, or you could hit rewind. Love without truth lies. Truth without love kills. That's a good one. So. I have to bring these two things together. So love, yeah, we have a tendency. For example, if I have a very pastoral heart as a priest, I could be like, oh, you know, we just need to understand people and journey with them. And, you know, we want to go easy on, on laying down the law when someone's just having a conversion. You know, and all those things are truth. Padre Pio himself, you know, would go very gently on people if it was they were just having a conversion and he, they came to him for confession. He would just be so gentle and kind with them. But sometimes... If they were not new, he would be he would be laying it down. So it's not that we do either or we need to do both and that there's always the necessity of both. And in fact, they they balance each other out. They balance each other out because love, if I am just super pastoral and I'm super, you know, kind and, and thinking of the other all the time and wanting that people to know that they're loved and to experience the love of God, which is so important. But if I compromise truth and if I think in order to be loving, I have to get rid of truth, then I've gone too far. And great evil, great harm will come from that because I have let go of reality because God is truth. Love has to act in accord with truth or it's lying to people. Like to say to people, oh, it doesn't matter. You do whatever you, God loves you no matter what. And you can, you can do anything and it's okay. You can just come back and no worries. I, no, that, that's too far. Like sin is really serious. Sin kills God in my soul. Sin is a participation in the crucifixion of Jesus. I don't want to sin. I don't want to hurt my best friend. That's really ugly. At least it's very ugly. The worst thing that ever happened was a crucifixion. So the worst thing I could ever do is sin. I don't want to sin. And I don't want to tell other people, you know, it doesn't matter if you sin or not. It's cool. Whereas at the same time, it's true that God loves us no matter what we do. And he will take the hit. Jesus on the cross took the hit of all of our sins. He took all of our guilt onto ourselves because we're powerless to pay off that impossibly vast debt. Only he could pay it off. So he gladly takes that on. But I shouldn't therefore take advantage of his kindness and heap more and more and more sin on top of him. I should have a heart to want to, to want to love him at every moment. And in order to love, I must adhere to the truth. In order to love Jesus, in order to love you, in order to love myself and those around me, I must live in the truth. Speaking the truth in love, St. Paul tells us, I believe in Ephesians. Speaking the truth in love, living the truth in love, acting the truth in love. Yet yeah, truth without love is not the heart of God. And I can sometimes get into this and be all like, ah, I'm right, especially on moral subjects. I would love to debate thee upon this moral subject. And I can get terribly confident that I could just win this, this logical argument with you and therefore I win. And that, that is the best thing to aim for. Uh, but I've forgotten love, that God, yes, he speaks the truth, but he does it in such a loving, kind way that he never forgets about me when he's revealing himself, when he's revealing truth, when he's revealing the reality of the consequences of my sin, for example. This is how we know what love is, that he loved us first. And while I was a sinner, while I was his enemy, Christ died for the ungodly, that that's God's heart. And if I forget that for a moment, if I cease to be loving and to, to speak the truth, in love. And if I remove that love, I've just torn apart the kingdom of God and I have separated myself. You know, the enemy, Satan, knows the truth. And sometimes he quotes it. Like he quotes scripture to Jesus in, and he could do that all day long. And he could smack you around with the catechism. And he does that sometimes, doesn't he? 
accusing us after we've fallen in sin. Then he becomes the legalist. It's like, oh, you, you're worthless. Look what you did. You broke this sin. You're, you've, you, you broke this sin. What? You broke this commandment. And he can get really heavy with, you know, the truth, 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 in order to try and lead us to more sin and to destroy our sense of being loved by the Father. So our connection with God is rooted in his love for us and in our response of love to him. And it's because I love him that I want and can and have the grace to, to try every day to obey the commandments. So if I let go of love, then there's only a matter of time before the whole thing falls apart because truth without love kills. And do you ever get in that place of like a debate, an argument heated about religion or politics or morality? And it gets really heated and charity is gone and I just want to win. I, that's a problem. I, that's a problem in my life. Archbishop Fulton Sheen, he said he'd, he would draw, oh, was it him? Might have been him might have been St. John Henry Newman. I would prefer to lose a thousand arguments, but win my brother. By which he meant he was okay with losing in debate so long as the person he was debating with might come to the Lord, that he might win him. You win a lot more. You, you win people's hearts a lot more with love than with truth, typically. Uh, St. Francis de Sales, great saying, you know, you, you'll get a lot more with a, a little thimble of honey than a whole barrel of vinegar. I have no idea if that was St. Francis de Sales, but let's say it was, because he loves the images and honey and things like that. But we all know that saying, right? Well, if you don't, you know it now. So in, in standing up for the truth, your greatest ally, your greatest tool is love. So brothers and sisters, this is who we are. This is Jesus. He always, he had no problem speaking the truth. That was my love hand. I've got confused you now. Love is over, uh, truth is over here. Love is over here. Jesus had no problem speaking the truth, but he always did it in love. His motivation for speaking the truth was always to love the other. And that's what he does for us now in prayer. That's always been my experience. In my conversion, oh my goodness, I in, first and foremost, I encountered love. I encountered this presence that totally loved me, knew me to my depths in all my goodness and all of my wretched sinfulness, knew me to my depths and totally loved and accepted me. It was the most amazing experience. I had piles of other spiritual experiences, but this one took the biscuit because it also wasn't shy about the truth. It was holy. Lots of love today is not holy. It's not pure because it's forgotten about the truth. Uh, whereas we worship a God who is all love and is the truth. He is both those things in one. It's this amazing paradox. This is the heart of God. Let's not throw away the heart of God for the sake of uh, people pleasing, for the sake of fitting in. And let's not abandon the heart of God and in his loving aspect for the sake of winning and being right and propping up my ego or whatever it is that I sometimes get into with that stuff. Let's let us speak. Let us live the truth in love. Amen.